characterization of his um, Obama's West Point speech in your blog post, and, and you said there's mm -hmm. this sort of realist components and there's internationalist components, and um, right. and so it's realist internationalism. But what struck me was that your the, the piece you clipped out to describe as uh, exemplifying realism was all about you yeah. know promoting fundamental freedoms and human rights and rule of law internationally. And to me, these are very liberal concepts. He said, you know, it's it's important to do these things even when it's hard. Um, and I think that's not only perhaps the opposite of realism, right? Because realism says yeah. you do those things when it's easy, but when it becomes hard, if it's against your interests, you know, that's, that's just to fool the masses. And it strikes me that that is actually the polar opposite of what we've seen in terms of foreign policy, out of which is a liberal rhetoric. But in fact, his foreign right. policy is very realist, actual realist, which yeah. is to say he throws out the rule of law. You know, we... Um, we're going to promote internationally unless one of our own citizens starts making traitorous comments against us then we're just going to summarily execute him yeah. um, with no trial of his peers etc. Alright, I'll play devil's advocate here and, and let me stress this is not the position I'm actually necessarily sure I buy but it, it's one that I want to understand you know, I want to hear a pushback on which is, it's not like I, I'm sorry, what's the gentleman's name again? The, the, the American based in Yemen? Al-Alaki Al-Alaki Al-Awlaki has been quite, you know, it, it's not like Al-Awlaki has hidden his views um, on what he thinks, you know, Al-Qaeda Al in Yemen, on the, on the Arabian Peninsula should do to Americans. He's, he's articulated quite clearly that he thinks that uh, terrorists should kill not just military uh, uh, members in the United States, but he's now recently expanded to say, just kill, at, you know, any Americans, and that's perfectly justified um, because of, of prior American actions. Mm -hmm. So, we, I mean... And it strikes me that that, you know, if you're going to articulate that kind of thing, and if in theory you're part of the command structure for al-Qaeda on the Arabian Peninsula, how is killing him any different from, let's say, trying to kill Admiral Yamamoto uh, during the Second World War? Now, admittedly, you can argue there's no overt declaration of war against a state, but there was a declaration of war or some sort of congressional authorization against al-Qaeda immediately after the 9-11 attacks. I would assume it would be safe to say that it would include... Um, you know, Al-Qaeda on the Arabian Peninsula. The constitutional issue you raise, I think, is perfectly valid, but is there anything problematic with saying, yes, you know what, if someone goes and issues a, uh, you know, a public uh, uh, statement saying, I encourage, <laughs> you know, and they, they take a position of responsibility in a foreign terrorist organization, exhorting uh, terrorists to kill as many Americans as they can, doesn't that suggest treasonous activity? I mean, doesn't that meet the bar sure. for saying, yes, let's, let's uh, strip them of citizenship? No, you can't be stripped of citizenship if you're a natural-born American just because you engage in treasonous activity. You have to be tried okay. and convicted of treason. You can't simply be summarily executed, number one. Two, um, he has the right to express his political views under the First Amendment. And yes, it's very controversial to claim otherwise, uh, there's a huge controversy in this country about whether um, incitement to commit hate crimes should be um, illegal. Um, I actually believe it should be. I believe that Alaki is behaving uh, egregiously, and he should be captured and tried and, and made an example of. Um, but he, um, but many people would disagree with me on that. And I mean, ask your re rephrase. I would actually disagree. You with probably you on would that, so rephrase yeah. the question yeah. as to whether someone who makes a statement that all homosexuals should be flogged or whatever should be. Um, culpable under the law, much less summarily executed for his views. So then the, the third question, the third distinction you made was, okay, is he part uh -huh. of the command structure? Is it, is it any different from simply taking out someone who's in the chain of command of an entity with whom right. you're at war, although this is not a state, but it's a non-state entity, we've said we're at war. My understanding, um, so there's a whole international legal debate about whether or not that framing makes any sense. I won't go there, but my understanding of Al-Alaki is that he's not part of the operational command structure of al-Qaeda. He's not planning operations. He's simply a propagandist, and his role is motivational. So um, it would not. It would be more like trying to take out uh, Goebbels during the Nazis, and, and maybe that would be the ethical thing to do. So I think there's an ethical question there, regardless of the constitutionality or legality of doing it. But right. I would say, from an ethical point of view, the question is, what's the gain? What is going to be the gain? And I would argue that an alternative to this strategy, which will backfire because it undermines our soft power, um, and even if you succeed, he'll simply become a martyr. A better strategy mm -hmm. is to capture him. That's going to be mm -hmm. hard, but, he, but we can do it. I have absolute faith in our intelligence community and our Marines. You capture him. 
you um, put him in prison. Instead of trying him, or instead of waterboarding him for intel, put him in a room with someone like Majid Nawaz, this um, former jihadist. He was just profiled on 60 Minutes. He's a, he's a British Muslim who... Now the sound is all funny. Majid Nawaz is a British Muslim who was an extremist, um, who was uh, converted back to moderate Islam right. uh, when he was in prison in Egypt by former members of the Muslim Brotherhood and now goes around the world try, trying to deprogram extremists, mm. um, greatly successful, mm. and just basically countering this narrative of jihadism. If you could convince, if you could convince Al-Laki that he's wrong mm. and turn him back to the, the, the light side, right? Yeah. Away from the dark side, imagine the force for good that he could be um, in promoting, in undermining jihadist narratives and promoting modern Islam. So you're basically proposing, um, so that is a if I understand this correctly, you are suggesting that this, this man is Anakin Skywalker. That, you know, if, if you actually, you know, <laughs> oh. that, that, that he could bring balance to the force and that he's, yes, been to the dark side for a while, but eventually, if someone could see the good in him, he could turn. No, I, what I'm suggesting is that the war on terror is a war of ideas, yes, okay. and we are winning militarily, but we are losing in, so, in terms of soft power. People like Aulaki are very powerful because this narrative is very powerful, and what you need is people like him to counteract his own narrative. People, and this is what people like Nawaz are doing. Okay. Um, and by, by this policy of simply taking them out in violation of all of our own standards, it only strengthens them because it makes us look hypocritical. And, and my point is that we do have alternatives and we do have smarter ways that we can fight in the war on terror that would also be consistent with the ideals in the national security strategy. Okay, I would push back on two, on, on two fronts. First, I'm not entirely sure that U.S. soft power is ebbing because of these strikes. I mean, if, you know, if you take a look at any kind of metric of U.S. soft power, it's actually been somewhat on the increase over the last two years, and you can credit that to... Uh, Obama being elected or what have you, or, or the fact that, frankly, we were starting from an extremely low base. Um, now, whether or not that's true in the Arab, in, in the Arab or slash Muslim world, I, I'll take your point on that. But I think, in some ways, we have a more fundamental disagreement about the extent to which ideas can actually alter people's preferences over time. Um, and here, I think I'm probably more skeptical than you are about this, which is, I'm not sure that even if you pursued this kind of policy that you suggested, that you would actually persuade that m many more, you know, people who would otherwise be sympathetic with Al Qaeda's motivations to stop being sympathetic with Al Qaeda's motivations, um, and and you know maybe this is this might actually be a fundamental philosophical disagreement between us. I'm not sure, um, but I'm I'm just not convinced that the kind of approach you're going to offer, and I'm not saying I have a better one, mind you, but the, the kind of approach that you're going to have on offer is actually going to yield the policy results you claim. Saudi Arabia has been extremely effective in deprogramming former Guantanamo detainees um, who returned to Saudi Arabia, and they have like a 99% rehabilitation rate. Um, and it, granted, um, I don't, I, I think there's some ethical questions there with taking former former jihadists and you know giving them uh, fancy cars and first rate education and a house to live in and putting them back into civil society. But it works in Saudi Arabia, and so I think the evidence is on the side of my argument. Okay. Now, the problem is, what do you do with that one percent? What happens, and um, what risks are you willing to take? But what I'm saying is that the consequences of this other strategy that isn't it works very well in specific in the specific right it, it is pretty easy to knock out these these guys with drones yeah. but it is not helping us win i mean the war on terror we, for everyone you knock out there's just there's just a handful more recruits and so i think we need smarter methods um and we need to think more broadly about our strategy 